Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's brief webinar, uh, brief technical webinar on detecting zero days in ArcSight with ZeroTect. Um, I am pleased to introduce Archis Gore, CTO of Polyverse, and he will give you everything you need to know about installing ZeroTect, how it works, and how it can detect real attacks in ArcSight. So, Archis, over to you. Thank you, Shana. Um, Welcome everyone. Um, today's webinar is focused, so we're not going to do any slides. We're just straight up going to go into ArcSight and detecting a, a zero day attack. Um, here I have an ArcSight console. Um, this is how you would see it. You know, you might have a, have a local instance. Uh, you might have this running in a number of ways, but eventually this is what you end up seeing. Let's kind of navigate through it a little bit. If you go to events and you have these channels and one of the channels is Polyverse and here's the Polyverse channel. Um, there will be some old events here, ignore them. We're gonna generate some new ones as we, as we run real attacks. Um, a key point here to remember is um, our site has, uh, has this technology called Flex Connectors which allows you to ingest uh, you know, logs and data and events from multiple, um, multiple sources. Uh, and multiple tools. And so um, what we do is we use the syslog flex connector. Uh, so our tool emits events to your syslog and our site knows exactly how to ingest them and do the right thing with them. Um, another key thing to note is uh, as part of the arc site certification process, we have to go through a, a deep formal review of all the events, all the fields, what they mean, what they're named. and why that's important is because if you run zero tech with ArcSight, you are assured that whatever events you're ingesting are consistent and, and your queries and your reporting and your filtering and monitoring, everything can is portable across ArcSight instances because it's always consistent. And with that, and knowing that this ArcSight is running, let's actually go into a real View, uh, a real brief on how to install ZeroTech, and then we will use it to detect an attack. Uh, ZeroTech is a an open source tool by Polyverse. It's located on GitHub. Uh, you can also go to the ArcSight marketplace and find a link to this tool, um, or you can just jump on straight here. Uh, ZeroTech releases. It it follows standard open source practices. Um, you know we we have have issues for all the things we want to work on. If you have a feature request, if you find a bug, file an issue for us. Um, if you want to submit a pull request, please go ahead. We, we welcome pull requests. Um, and consequently, we do all of our releases and GitHub releases. So going to a release will give you the latest release. Um, and, and here you have ZeroTech. ZeroTech is compiled as a fully statically linked executable for Linux. Um, it has no dependencies whatsoever. And that is a, that is a very comfortable notion to have. Um, traditionally, you would install ZeroTech by running this command. Oops, this command right here. And just running this command will always install the latest ZeroTech logging to your log files. Um, but today we're going to configure ZeroTech a little bit differently um, so that we can send logs to our site. Um, what I would recommend is always installing the latest zero tech and we'll modify the file. So with that, let us go and you know what I am going to download. Let's try that. Oops, no. The install script only works on VMs and not in containers, which is okay, because uh, it needs an init system so that ZeroTech launches the daemon. Um, what we're going to do is copy the link to ZeroTech. I'm going to wget or just download that the latest ZeroTech binary. Oops, it, oh, I already had one, so it just marked it as dot one. That's okay. We can make it executable real quick. There we go. And that's zero tech. And if you want to be assured, will this work on my machine? What about dependencies? If we just run LDD, you'll find that it's not a dynamic executable. What this means is um, if you have a scratch Docker container, if your VM, 
so long as you have the Linux kernel and nothing else, not libc, not a package manager, nothing, uh, zero tech will execute. Uh, all it needs is a kernel, and then on top of that is zero tech. It has no libraries, it has no shared dependencies. Okay, so how do we configure zero tech to connect to um, connect to uh, Arc site? Well, we actually uh, configured zero tech to connect to syslog. If you run zero tech and look for help, we'll use the dot one file. Um, you'll see a bunch of different options. It, it um, you know, the, the easiest option is to put all of these configs in a config file and then use this config file uh, parameter to launch zero tech. This is the model that we use when we, uh, when that install script um, installs zero tech as a system daemon. It will, you know, it, it will just run the zero tech binary through, uh, you know, init, um, you know, init.d or, uh, you know, uh, systemd upstart, what have you. And in that configuration, it will just have this parameter pointing to a config file. Uh, and that's the method we're going to use today. But every method from the config file is also available on the CLI. And we're going to use this set of um, configurations to send it to syslog over UDP. So with that, I am going to show you a zero tech config file that auto configures. So there's a couple of things in here to point out. Um, zero tech, because you might need extra kernel logging enabled uh, to see these zero days uh, to have a better impact, uh, zero tech will help you configure those for you. Uh, so you don't have to go around configuring them. You don't have to ensure that they're there. Uh, all you do is you say auto configure and you tell zero tech which kernel settings you want to be true and it will go ensure that they're always true. And throughout its lifetime, it will maintain, it will periodically check and make sure that they remain true. Um, and then after that, we are going to set up a syslog connector and we're going to say, out, output this in the CEF, which is the uh, common um, event format, uh, which, is the, which is the approved format for our site. Um, and that's where all the fields and, you know, just not just the formatting, but the headers and the fields and what they mean. And all of that is documented and approved uh, by our site, um, by our site people. And the destination is a UDP, um, you know, over a UDP protocol. This is the art site server that we're going to send today's events to. And this is the IP address of our local server. And I'm just going to give it some random port 57945. Um, it, can, it can be just any random local port that you want to bind to. Just make sure no one else is binding to it. And with that, um, launching zero tech is as simple as you run the executable and you say config file and give it the path to the config file, which sitting in the Etsy directory is a, always a good idea. And that's zero tech. And here you have it configuring kernel parameters. And that is it. Those six lines of configuration and this one static executable is now doing zero day detections and sending them to arc site. That's all you have to do. Um, this, this actually concludes, uh, I mean, the webinar is not over, but this concludes the the amount of work you have to do to start detecting zero days from your machines into your arc site instances. That's all you have to do. Now let's actually detect a zero day. Let's see if we can if we can't catch an attacker. Um, I'm this this is a this is a fun one. Um, I'm going to launch a vulnerable nginx. Um, it's it's just basically nginx 1.4. Uh, we just took a snapshot when it had a buffer overflow in it. Uh, we haven't modified it. We haven't injected a vulnerability or bug in it. It just nginx as you would have found it. Um, let's actually try and ping that port. Why not? Let's go to localhost and it was bound to port 80. Here's a ridiculously large file, just some junk to ensure that nginx is working. And that's, I mean, you know, you can tell that I'm a nerd because this is how I verify something works. I, I couldn't be bothered to, to add any more formatting than to just add a bunch of digits. But it's serving and you can refresh the page over and over again to verify that. Um, 
after that, we're going to launch an attack. Um, this attack is open source. You can go to our website and you can view the full attack in Ruby um, and how it works. It, 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 is a, it is a fully self-adapting attack. That's the fun part. Let's get this started and talk, I'll talk you through what's happening. Um, what's happening here is, oh, it did not like the overflow line. That's okay. There we go. So what's happening here is the attack is now discovering the stack canary. So one of the fun things that we did with this Nginx is we left the vulnerability in, but we added every kind of mitigation um, that, that was state of the art as of six months ago. So it has a CFI, control flow integrity, it has stack canaries. Um, it does not have a shadow stack, uh, but we're working on adding that as well. But uh, it does have ASLR. And so the idea of this attack is despite all of those things in existence, this attack is working remotely and it's going over the network and it's attacking Nginx. Um, here you, you saw that it brute forced the stack canary by going one byte at a time. Then it discovered something called the procedural link table. Um, you know, then it found a blind drop gadget uh, and then it's going to do a just in time drop, a JIT drop attack. Um, so what's actually happening when this attack is progressing? Um, as you can see, Nginx itself uh, realized that, you know, every time the stack canary was broken, there was something called a stack smashing, right? Which means the, the stack frame was not what was expected. The canary value was not what, what was expected. But even beyond that, uh, oh, and here's the attack working. And now we have a remote connection into Nginx, a remote reverse shell. Um, but what's happening behind the scenes is the kernel log buffer. The kernel is recording a ton of segmentation faults and a, a variety of other faults. And that is what Zero Tech here is detecting and it is sending to, oops, not there, right here. And it is sending them to <clears throat> our site. And so if we refresh again, Sometimes it needs a refresh. I'm slowing the channel. During that attack, what has actually happened is on the arc site side, we have recorded, you see the spike. All of that, all of those events that have spiked are, um, are the result of zero tech detecting various failures. Um, and zero tech detects a couple of different things. Um, but I'm going to talk about a special one, which is called a probe. Um, so in general, think about, think about an attacker. Think about an attacker that is adapting. Every time they fail, they try something different, right? Um, each of those failures, each of the attempts that an attacker makes might lead to something like a Linux kernel trap or a, or a segmentation fault as, as more colloquially known. Um, but if you were to look at a set of uh, these faults over a period of time, let's say even 10 seconds, uh, as Zero Tech does. Uh, what you might find is that each of those faults has everything is identical except the value of one register is moving incrementally by a fixed amount. Now that is a very classic probe, right? It's like someone is probing here and then the next one and then the next one until they succeed. Um, what Zero Tech does is it detects this event called a register increment probe. And we are going to oops, view details of that event. And here you can see that, uh, you know, I mean, aside from like zero tech detected that the process was Nginx, what the host name was, what the paid was, a whole lot of other things are captured, but it's basically, especially saying, um, you know, it had in number of justifying events that led to it um, detecting this as a probe. Um, and let's see, oops. I'm just going to collapse these things a little bit. Um, I reduced my, um, reduced my monitor resolution so that the demos would look better. Oops. There we go. And so, yeah, so 
there we go. So it's basically saying that there were three events, uh, three continuous failures that happened. Um, and, you know, and those, those would be the three right before that probe increment. And you'll see multiple of these probe increments as well as zero tech is going through those logs. And so, and you can alert on it, you can analyze it, but, but here's the, um, so that, that's kind of the end almost of how zero day detection works. But I'm going to leave you with, with a very intriguing possibility that makes ArcSight so special and makes this integration so special. Um, zero tech looks at these probes um, you know, within a very small time span because it's running on the host. It, it, it can't use a lot of memory. It's going to look at events in the last 30 seconds, uh, you know, the last 100 events at the most. But ArcSight has no such limitation. And by ingesting these zero day signals from multiple hosts across a period of time uh, and using ArcSight and, and the power of the fact that all of those fields are fixed and you can, you can reliably write queries and uh, analytics on top of them, you can now detect much larger fleet wide attack attempts. You can detect, um, you know, even on the same machine, you can detect a, an attacker that is trying to go slow uh, to evade zero tech. And so that's the true power. Um, and I'm going to leave you with one more comment, which is um, the, the sudo attack from um, the sudo vulnerability, which allowed um, an attacker to exploit a buffer overflow on practically every Linux on the planet and get root privileges. Um, every attempt, every failed attempt at running that attack would have been detected by zero tech and would have been sent to our site. And so, uh, in the future, if you are being attacked, a free open source tool combined with your existing art site is going to be quite helpful, we think. So I hope this was educational. Go to our repository, comment, file issues, give us feedback. Thank you. Thanks so much, Archis, and thank you to everyone uh, watching this technical webinar. Um, as Archis mentioned, please do feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Thank you so much and have a great day.